Hi, my name is Tiago, and I'll present this paper called On Homophony and Brittany Entropy. This was joint work with Clara, Simone, and Ryan. So in English, the unrelated meanings nights and night uh, share the same pronunciation, which means they are homophones. And on average, roughly 4% of the words in a language are estimated to be homophones. Homophony, though, may lead to inefficiencies. Uh, so for example, homophonous words are recognized more slowly. So given this evidence, maybe languages should avoid homophony, right? On the other hand, uh, prior work has argued for the efficiency of homo homophony. Um, so for example, Pianta Dossi et al. in 2012 argued that ambiguity would allow a, word, a language to reuse its good word forms. So for example, if night is a really good word form, it might be worth to allow some confusion in order to reuse it since it's fast and efficient to produce. They then showed that good word forms have more homophones than their counterparts. Uh, and this was used uh, to argue for uh, ambiguity being a tool for language efficiency. So given these other evidence, maybe languages should favor homophony instead, right? But uh, recently, uh, Trout and Bergen uh, proposed a new explanation to Pianta Dossi et al.'s findings, attributing homophony to chance. So if we model the word forms distribution probabilistically, more homophones amongst good word forms would be expected because they're just more likely. So the question we're trying to answer here is, does human language exhibit a pressure for or against homophony or neither? So to talk about this, we'll need to define phonotetics, which is a language's phono uh, probability distribution over word forms. Uh, the classic example to explain phonotetics is in English, that the unattested word form black has a high probability. So even though it doesn't exist, it sounds natural in English. And if you heard it, it would belong to the, to the language. On the other hand, the word panic has a low phonetic probability. It doesn't sound natural in English. Um, even though all its phones are present in English, uh, the, the way they combine sounds like it's a foreign word. And homophony, if we take this uh, by chance interpretation, should be tightly related to phonetics. We'll model the phonetic distribution here as this P of small w which we decompose as this spawn level language model. We, uh, in this paper, frame homophony as a Rennie collision entropy. So the Rennie collision entropy is given by this equation here, which basically measures the surprisal of two word forms sampled from a phonetic distribution to be the same. And it assumes uh, word forms are sampled independently. So if we look closely at this equation, it has P of W squared, which basically means P of W times P of W, uh, which means these two probability distributions are being taken independently. So this is a natural measure of homophony in a language where words were sampled IID. The issue here is that we don't know how strongly this IID assumption holds, and this is tightly connected to homophony. So, what we do is we propose a new measure with no IID assumption that is closely related to the one before, which we term the sample Rennie entropy. And this directly measures the surprise of a homophone appearing in a specific lexicon. Basically what this is measuring is the number of homophones in the lexicon divided by the maximum number of homophones that a lexicon of that size could have. So if natural languages have a pressure in favor of homophony, word forms should not be sampled by ID and the lexicon's Rennie entropy will be smaller than expected, uh, which means that uh, a homophone will be less surprising than expected in those languages. If languages have a pressure against homophony, then word forms should uh, uh, again not be sampled by ID, but this time a lexicon's Rennie entropy will be higher than expected. So a homophone should be more surprising uh, than expected in these languages. So we can use the sample Rennie entropy to study uh, the pressure uh, towards homophony. 
Uh, to make this more concrete, we also define a new hypothesis test, uh, which relies on this new distribution over lexical of size m, this p of big w. And this distribution has two important assumptions. The first is that word forms are sampled according to the phonotetic distribution, which is p of small w. The second is that word forms are sampled ID. So we can measure the sample Rini entropy of artificial lexica sampled from this new distribution and compare it to the observed lexicons one as a hypothesis test. And this is described in more detail in the paper. We do not have access to the phonotetic distribution in practice. So we'll estimate here it's with two different models, an n phone language model and an LSTM phone level language model. And we will evaluate both these models with multiple metrics. So going into our results, uh, the LSTM test set cross entropies are smaller than the n grams in all languages, which means that it models the phonotetic distribution better. Uh, if we look at the Shannon entropy, on the other hand, the LSTMs are smaller than the n grams, which means that the n grams distribute the probability mass more uniformly over all strings. Uh, taken together, we see that the LSTM probability mass seems to be more focused on the set of possible strings, while the n grams is more smoothed over all strings. If now we analyze the n grams Rene entropy and we run the, uh, the new hypothesis test on top of the n grams, we would see that all languages hinder homophony. The n grams, though, highly overfit the training set with a very lower cross entropies on the training set than on the test set. This uh, means that the first assumption in the new hypothesis test we ran does not hold. So word forms are not sampled according to p of small w if we take it to be the n grams. Now, analyzing the LSTM language models, we see that uh, English hinders homophony, German presents no clear trends, and Dutch favors homophony. Uh, this is the conclusion we get from our new hypothesis test. We, though, uh, should be careful here, and we highlight this in the paper, that we don't know exactly how strongly uh, the LSTMs will hold to the uh, first assumption in our new hypothesis test. So take this with a grain of salt. So the conclusions of, of our paper are that homophony can be analyzed in terms of a language's Rini entropy, and that we see no clear pattern across uh, analyzed languages as opposed to uh, what previous work found. So uh, what we conclude is that there's no cross-linguistic pressure either in favor or against homophony uh, that we can find. And this is it. Uh, thanks very much for watching uh, the presentation. And um, I hope I'll see you at the poster session.